It's seven o'clock. I'd entertain a motion to open. Motion open. Second. 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 Um, a roll call vote. Uh, all those in favor, Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. And Jeff Walker? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna read our Zoom disclaimer and off we go. This is J.R. Colby, Chairman, Newbury Select Board. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Tracy Blaze, Town Administrator? Yes. Julie O'Brien, Executive Administrator? Yes. Martha Taylor, Town Planner? Yes. Uh, Eileen DeVoe, Town Accountant, Assistant Finance Director? Okay, let's see if we get back to Eileen. Uh, John Lucy, Chief of Police? Uh, we have anticipated speakers on the agenda. Please respond in the affirmative. Uh, T.J. Melvin, Millennium Engineering. Yeah. Okay. Uh, correct me on the pronunciation. Jordy Vining, or is it Jordy Vining? Hi. Uh, yes, it's Jordy Vining. Thank you. I'm here. Okay. I've seen your name in print quite a few times. I've never met you in person, though. Hey, Jordy Vining. Uh, Jerry Clymer. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, William DeMeo, Veterans Graves Office. Yes. Okay. Introduction to remote meeting. Good evening. This open meeting of the Newbury Select Board is being conducted virtually consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 in the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. To mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such as order suspends a requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. The order which you can find posted on the town's website allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. This meeting, the Newbury Select Board is convening by Zoom meeting link as posted on the agenda on the town's website. All of the meeting materials for any executive session materials are available on the website. We recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on the website. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, we cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business in accurate meeting minutes. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I'll go down the line of board members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and be sure to state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in dialogue with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. The chairperson or vice chairperson will afford the public comment for a period of three minutes, and it will be granted as follows. Participation will be sought through the raise hand function. For video conference participants, this function can be accessed by clicking on the participants option listed in the menu below the photo gallery. You'll need to hover your cursor over this area if you don't see it. A participants window will open and display on the right. On the bottom of this participant area, you will see the list of phone and video participants. And on the bottom, you will see the ability to click on a button to raise hand. Please ensure your name is displayed. You may rename by using the more function next to your name. Telephone participants can use their phone's keypad while in a Zoom meeting to raise hand by hitting number nine, a star nine, I'm sorry. For those who have requested to be heard through the raise hand function, will be heard in the order of which they are listed. The system lists the order in which uh, the first person hit the raise hand function. Please identify yourself by stating your name and address, and then your question or comment. You will be unmuted and your hand will be lowered when you have been given the floor for your questions. We will continue down the list of those in the raise hand column. If 
finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Okay, so now we'll move to uh, oral communications from citizens. Um, this is a new process, especially with Zoom. We're gonna see how it goes. So um, hopefully we get a little bit of patience from everyone if we hit some glitches here. Uh, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is try to afford everybody three minutes each that wants to participate in oral communications from citizens. And um, we're gonna try to keep it to the first 15 minutes of the meeting. And as soon as we're out of raised hands, we'll move on to the business of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Alicia. I will keep um, time for this um, session. And at two minutes and 30 seconds, I'll give you um, a sign. I'll say uh, you're at two minutes and 30 seconds. And that means you have 30 seconds left, if needed. OK, thank you for that. You're welcome. And I just want to, uh, just for a little more clarity before we start, um, before we start, members of the public may address the select board for up to three minutes uh, longer with the permission of the chairperson. The select board will not engage in discussion on topics raised during public comment, but may choose to add the topic to a future agenda. This agenda segment will be limited to 15 minutes unless extended at the discretion of the chairperson. So uh, let's move on to oral communications from citizens. Do we have any raised hands? Okay, hang tight. We'll select them in the order you guys raised your hands. Mr. Chairman, I believe yes. Jim Moran raised his hand. Nobody's using the raise hand function, but I think I saw him physically okay. raise his hand. Let's let's start with Jim. Okay. Uh, good evening, JR. Uh, I had several issues. I'd just like to state them. Uh, and maybe you could comment after I state. I have Four, I was looking for the status of a schedule and budget for the police station. I was looking for a, a plan and schedule for town hall, a plan and schedule for the upper and lower greens. And hopefully tonight we'll talk about the PEG funds, um, which was decided two weeks ago that that would be tabled and talked about tonight. Uh, do you want to comment on my comments? Um, any comments from the board? Um, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. That's not the format of the citizens' concerns. We're okay. not to discuss. We we take in comment, and this is not engage a conversation of items that are not on the agenda. That's a violation of the open open meeting law. Um, so, Mr. Moran, if you want to continue your your uh, your, I guess time. I've stopped you at four, at forty seconds. I'm yeah, going to hit, I, hit I, you again. Yeah, I'd like to comment on the agenda and the format. In, in your notes on the agenda at the very end, it says that you'll entertain other items, I, I, items not listed, may be brought up to discussion to the extent permitted by law. Now, I believe all of the items I've brought up have been discussed for many, many months prior to this. So I believe it's, it's it, should, it can be discussed. It shouldn't violate the law unless somebody can tell me otherwise. And uh, all I'm looking for are statuses and not necessary discussions on points. <clears throat> Is anybody gonna comment on that? Well, um, you're at one minute and 26 seconds. Um, if this, if you would like a status report, I think the board has heard, has heard that. I think we can possibly, um, get you a status update, maybe possibly through the town administrator's report at some point in time, but we're not going to have any dialogue. We're not going to have discussion on this. The town hall, the police station, none of that is on the agenda tonight, Jim. You have to understand there's a law for a reason, and we're not going to be escorted down a potential violation of the open meeting law. Okay. I respectfully disagree, but I'll yield my time to others. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe Mr. Stewart had his hand raised. Yeah, uh, James Stewart. Yes, uh, my name is James Stewart. I live at 22 Old Point Road. And I just wanted to get on the record that there is a lot of history about the 14th Street. 
extension. Uh, there is a lot of opposition. It's been registered with both Tracy and JR, and it involves the taking of a significant amount of land from five abutters. And I just want that on the record. And I'm not sure the police chief cares whether it's one block this way or the other way. We're not against access to help people save lives, but we think there's a better plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Jack Rybicki. Okay. Jack? On you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, select board, I think this is one of the more important things you've done uh, to date this year. And one of the more important things that you'll do is reintroducing the public voice to the meeting. I just like to say that uh, I, I'm sure there'll be um, some glitches, but uh, I look forward to coming interactions over current agenda items and, and vibrant discussions to help us all move forward with uh, common visions for the benefit of all. Uh, that's all I offer. I cede my, the rest of my time. And thanks again. Okay, thank you, Jack, for those comments. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Stephen Mangin is raising his hand. Yeah, yes, Steve. I, I just wish to uh, join in with Jim, what, what Jim Stewart said earlier, but also wish to add that when the board met a couple of weeks ago and voted to support the uh, the document that was in front of it regarding the policy for access, on, emergency access on 14th Street, the longstanding citizen opposition was well known and that, for, that wasn't brought forth during the discussion. As such, I think if it had been, there may have been a reluctance on the part of the board to voice their support for the project or the document that was before you that uh, voiced support. And given that, I think that down the road, the board might consider reconsidering and drawing a negative determination regarding the document that you voted on the last time around, because at the time that significant public opposition was not made known to the board in spite of their desire, at least on the part of some people to determine whether there had been opposition. So with that, I'll stop and I'll perhaps say more during citizens concerns on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Do we have any more hands up, Tracy? I do not see any raised. Okay. We'll move on to uh, board and committee reports. Um, I signed the PR 21-08 for Julie O'Brien. Under grants, gifts, and donations, we have a donation of $5,000 from Elder Services to the Newbury Council on Aging. I would entertain a motion to accept. Make a motion to accept. Second. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. <clears throat> we also received a donation of $200 from Bill DeMeo to cover the expenses for the veteran lunch notifications. Entertain a motion so we can have discussion. Make a motion to accept and uh, thank Bill. I'll second that. Okay. Bill, did you want to speak to this? Yes, I did, JR. Um, I got a phone call from Karen Tyler Saturday. Um, I did indeed make a $200 check out to the Eastern Essex District. Uh, the money is going to be used to send out a communication to the veterans, explaining to them why Karen uh, b believes, and I believe as well, and I'm sure Mike does as well, that in this, pan, in this coronavirus uh, situation, um, having a luncheon at this short notice is probably not the best thing to do. So the money is gonna be used to uh, send out a document to the veterans, uh, explaining to them the situation and thanking them for their service, obviously. I'm sure Mike can probably expand more upon that decision not to go yeah. forward with a luncheon. Like I said, um... 
it just a bill i didn't know that's but what the 200 dollars. so i picked my packet up thursday that's when I, I reached out to you but i didn't get back yet you didn't get back to me but i talked karen and i just said to her he goes i i we were 300 dollars, 200 dollars short basically in fundraising and it was getting down it to the end but uh, I just didn't want anything not to happen, but I want to thank you, Bill, for your money. I think that we get a letter out to him, and maybe we can do something around Christmas or something if we have, you know, a little more time. But I would still like to recognize our new revets. Uh, and I really, Bill, once again, thank you for coming up with this money to help us get the message out. Well, Mike, what what uh, what you folks organized last year was uh, incredible. I was uh, I was there. It was great, uh, and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure the vets would love to do that again. It was a, it was I a think, great like event. I, said, I, I hope we get a vaccine and I hope we can do it again because it was a fun time. It was just, it was nice to get them on it. And uh, my stepmom did a great job in bringing back some of the stories of the World War II vets in Newbury. So it was all, it was, and like I said, it was just a, it was a fun event. Agreed. Thank so you, one, Bill. Well, thanks, okay. Bill. Thank you. Sure. And actually, while we're still on this, uh, Chairman Colby, I also spoke to the uh, Karen Tyler, the um, veterans agent, and she asked that if um, I would reiterate at our meeting that um, she is there, uh, the veteran service as the as the town of Newbury's veterans services officer to help our veterans in our town. Um, although it's things aren't um, is easy to um, get together and it's not, it's difficult to um, meet face to face. Um, she wanted um, us to make our uh, veterans um, aware that she's still there. So uh, she's a phone call away. Um, if there's anything that you need for services um, uh, that she can be of assistance of, uh, reach out to her. If you don't have her number, reach out to the town. The town can put you in touch with her. Um, but she is definitely there and she wants to help. Excellent. Okay, thank you for that, Alicia. You're welcome. Um, Jay, I, Michael, and I guess uh, Karen, do we have many World War II veterans left in our town? That I'm not aware of. Um, permission to speak? Oh, hi, Karen. Karen. Yes, Hi, uh, I hi. am here. <laughs> How are you? Hi, hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do I have a uh, permission to speak? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Uh, so, yep. Um, as was mentioned, you know, I spoke with uh, Bill over the weekend, and um, you know, we I appreciate the um, the donation. And after the two of us spoke for a little while. Um, we thought it would be a great opportunity, like he said, to, um, you know, to send out a communication, say thank you, make sure that Veterans Day didn't go by without some sort of communication. Uh, I also, you know, uh, we also thought that doing a joint letter, uh, it gives the town also and the veterans to know that Bill is the new Graves officer. So it is gonna be going out from both my office and him. And I think it's a great way to just keep the, you know, the veterans informed of, you know, um, everyone who is there to help uh, both living and deceased. So, um, so I'm, I'm happy to do that with him. And, uh, you know, unfortunately the luncheon isn't uh, gonna happen this year. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and we have the interest um, in the safety and health of our veterans. So we're just really trying to do what's best for them. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to say that and to, you know, get something out to them. And, uh, you know, and like Alicia said, you know, I'm here, um, anything that any uh, veterans need. Um, you know, our World War II veterans, uh, they're passing away. Um, you know, it's its something that I can look into if you are interested in finding out more um, about how many um, World War II vets. Um, I can see what I can do, but unfortunately it is an era that, you know, they're passing away pretty quickly. It's just, you know, my, my dad was in the war and 
he's been gone for a while. I mean, there was just such a great generation and, you know, they got to be quite old. They got to be in the yeah. late nineties, you know? And I talked to quite a few of them. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be great. I was just curious. Yeah, absolutely. Karen, thanks for your service. Oh, absolutely. Anything I can do. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Karen. Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, uh, next item. We have a grant. Oh, excuse me. Oh, we have Sorry. to finish. The roll Good call vote. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Roll call vote. Alicia Greco. Yes. Michael Doyle. Yes. Jerry Heavey. Yes. Jeff Walker. Yes. Okay, good catch, Julie. Thank you. Uh, we have a grant of $5,000 from the Center for Tech and Civic Life to the town of Newbury. I would entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Okay. Um, now, Tracy might be able to hit on some of the finer points, but in a nutshell, this this grant will um, will help cover our expenses during the election due to COVID, things that are over and above normal protocol. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, I will move to a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? A motion, what is the motion for? I know it's to accept, but you just can't say motion. If, if the motion is to accept the, this money, fine. That's what I thought the motion was for. Motion to accept then. Yeah, but cool. he just said the word motion. Right. You gotta right. you gotta fill in the fill in the blanks. Jerry, so motion to accept the money. Thank you. And I will second. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. J.R. Colby, yes. We have no public hearings tonight. Uh, under new business, we have a request for public property use from Tim Alberts, Triton Regional School District, Central Street Fields. This is for a running event. Um, I would entertain a motion. I move that we um, approve Mr. Albert's request for public property use. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? I believe this is, oh, go ahead, Julie. Hi, I just wanted to ask, do you think we could include for JR to sign that only? So we just need okay. one signature on the form? Okay, I was gonna take that as a separate motion. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, so we have a motion on the floor. Sorry, Alicia, where, where were you at? I believe this is, um, and Julie, maybe you can correct me if, if I'm wrong on this, but I believe that this, this is a, a running for the track. They wanna run around the fields. I don't think they want to run through and over the fields, but I think they want to be able to cut through uh, where the Boy Scouts cut that field behind where Triton connects to the- Right, that's my understanding, field. it's around. And they want to just circum circumnavigate the fields. Is this for cross country? It's like a cross country club. It's not, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, I guess it is for Triton. Julie, what is his, is, does he yeah. say what is? It yeah, it says the JV runners would run along the edge of the property, past the old runway, along the wooden fences and the stone along the Central Street and back around the path and the Triton campus, limited to 20 runners total. And no students go on the fields. Correct. No warm ups and no students go on the fields. Okay, any other questions or discussion? I'll move to a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby, yes. I would also entertain a motion for the chairman to sign this request for public property use on behalf of the board. I move to allow the chairman to sign on behalf of the board. I'll second. Information, why is that necessary? I just procedurally, why, why did you? Given the circumstances where we're not all here to sign tonight after the meeting, okay. just to keep moving along timely for the for people that apply for things like this. Okay, all right, that's fine. I just wondered why, because we, we've okay. never done that before. 
for. Thank you. Okay, and J.R. Colby, yes. Um, sorry, we have to uh, we have to take that roll call vote again for that motion. Alicia Greco. Yes. Michael Doyle. Yes. Jerry Heavey. Yes. Jeff Walker. Yes. J.R. Colby, yes. All right, we have a couple surplus declarations. 1985 Leboy 300 asphalt roller. 2009 Swenson sand and salt spreader. I would entertain a motion to declare these items surplus. I move to declare the two items that you mentioned surplus. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. You want to? Can you give us the backstory on them? Are they from the DPW uh, or? Yes, DPW. Um, the asphalt roller is a 1985. It's lived its useful life. And even though the Swenson salt and sand spreader is a 2009, um, given the corrosive and, you know, ab abusive Nature. Yeah. plowing and ice control, it's also lived its useful life to be reliable for a municipality. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. After the surplus declaration, that allows us to bring these to public auction. Correct. So that, that way we can recoup some money from these things if there are interested buyers out there. We'll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Uh, Mike Doyle? Is he frozen? He might be froze up. I'll come back to him. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Uh, I Jeff Walker? Yes. Uh, Mike Doyle? Yes, I, I just froze. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you didn't miss much. We were just doing the roll call vote. <laughs> and uh, J.R. Colby, yes. Okay, so that concludes the surplus declarations. Uh, we'll move on to T.J. Melvin from Millennium Engineering. This is a submission of a special permit application construction located at 3 Newburyport Turnpike, Assessor's Map R47, Lot 39, located in the Water Supply Protection Overlay District. And this is a vote to accept the special permit application and discuss a public hearing date. And if anyone's curious, the reason um, this falls to the Board of Selectmen is because it's located in the Water Supply Protection Overlay District. Hi, so, um, Mr. Melvin. Hi, hi, good evening. My name is TJ Melvin with Millennium Engineering here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, so as you mentioned, we are in the Water Supply Protection Overlay District. Um, uh, really what's triggering it is the amount of impervious on the site. Uh, the, re the regulations require less than or anything over 15% of the site being rendered impervious uh, requires a special permit. Um, we are also going for site plan approval with the planning board. Uh, and just a quick overview of the project. Uh, we're proposing a mixed use uh, retail residential building on the old circle finishing site. Uh, we're proposing uh, 33 parking spaces with associated stormwater management systems. Uh, the lot is actually split uh, in both Newberry and Newberry Port. Uh, however, the majority of the work is in Newberry. That's just the northern portion of the site located in Newberry Port. Uh, we are proposing to tie in our utilities to Newburyport water and sewer. And um, we have filed with uh, both Newburyport and Newbury Concom, uh, Newburyport and Newbury Planning. And uh, now tonight with you guys for the special permit. Okay. Um, are there any, uh, we need to entertain a motion so we can ask questions. And, and uh, I move to accept the special permit application. I'll second that. Discussion from the board. I have a question. Jerry Heavey. Hi. Um, in going through uh, the documents, Mr. Melvin, it says uh, there are a dozen residential units. It doesn't indicate whether or not they're condos or apartments or low income or anything. It just says residential. What is the owner anticipating uh, those, to make those units? Um, I, I don't believe he's anticipating low income. I'm not sure where he stands on condo versus rental. Um, really from, from our end, it's the same. Uh, 
but I get that would be a, a better question that I can ask him and follow up. Okay. All right. Well, uh, will that, Mr. Chairman, may I, I have a question? Yes. Sir. Um, will that, this is, we're going to, we're going to vote to accept the permit and going to schedule a public hearing date. Would, would that, those type of questions come out in the public hearing? Martha? Yes, they will. Okay. Yep. This is really just for, for TJ to, you know, just present it to you very briefly for the board to accept it and then we'll move forward to the next step, the public hearing. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hale, does the public hearing, does it have to be a joint hearing with the planning board? Um, typically we try to do that um, just to kind of help move the process along and so both boards are getting the same information at the same time. Uh, what we've done in the past for a couple of these is have the first hearing together so we, both boards get the presentation. <clears throat> and then because the concerns are a little bit different, they can track separately after that, okay, thank potentially. You. So we could discuss that as a possibility. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, any other questions or comments at this time? It's just nice to see that this piece of land is finally gonna be reused again. Um, Circle finishing had a great business there until the fire and it's nice to see somebody picking it up again. Yeah, commercial site in town that's definitely not been utilized in an awful long time. Right. Okay, uh, we'll move to a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby? Yes. All right, thank you for your time tonight, Mr. Um, what about scheduling thank the you. date for oh, the public right, hearing? right, right, right. Good catch, Alicia. Sorry. Um, do you so have any dates in mind, Martha? Um, what I'd like to suggest, if it's all right with the board, is for um, <clears throat> Julie and me to work offline and coordinate with all the members. We've got the planning board has about seven public hearings going right now. Um, <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I think probably we'd be looking at something in early December, if that, if that works. But rather than trying to set a date tonight, if we can pick up the conversation and make sure we find a time that meets everybody's needs and schedules. Is that acceptable? Is it we can do that because uh, the public hearing's not open yet? I am fine with that. Oh, no, Masa, my question is to you. Yeah. Is that acceptable? Can we do it that way? Because the public hearing isn't open, we don't have to schedule a date publicly today? No, we don't. That's basically administrative. Okay. <coughs> so that would, okay. that would be helpful so we can coordinate schedules. Okay, so between, we'll leave it, um, between now and our next meeting, we'll, we'll figure a uh, date out in the first half of December. Yeah, I think that's a likely time frame. yes. Okay, I would entertain a motion. I move that we allow Martha Taylor to work with Julie O'Brien on a date to schedule the um, public hearing that is um, fits with the schedules of the Board of Selectmen and the planning and the planning board. I'll second that. That sounds good. <laughs> Uh, roll call vote. I'll circle back to accept the, the application. Um, roll call vote on Alicia's motion. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. J.R. Colby? Yes. And we also, we have a motion on the floor to accept the application. And I will move to a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby, yes. Thank you, Mr. Melvin. We'll be seeing you sometime in the first half of December. Great, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Tracy, you ready for an administrator's report? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll start with a brief coronavirus update, and then I'll let Chief Lucy give you uh, greater details. But from the, the financial perspective, um, the second filing of the CARES Act is now complete and has been submitted, and the town anticipates receipt of approximately 106,000 
$200, bringing um, our total funding uh, to date to a little over 206,000. In addition to that, we've also received another 15,000 in grant proceeds related to um, COVID reimbursements. Uh, the contact tracers have all been secured by our health agent, Deborah Rogers, and are under contract with the town and are currently working cooperatively with Rowley and Salisbury to address any Triton cases as um, they may materialize. Um, and I'll segue to Chief Lucy if you want to take the rest of the COVID report. All right. Permission to address this, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Chief Lucy. Uh, so yeah, uh, as far as our status, uh, Newberry status, we are still enjoying a gray status. And what that means is we are less than five count of, uh, of cases in town. Um, the, the health department and our actions, I think are really being effective and we're gonna continue that trend. Hopefully uh, the area communities, um, they, uh, there's a lot of red in our area, neighboring communities, a lot of yellow um, that we're, we're concerned with. But uh, we think that our actions to just keep a step one status, keep the crowding down low to see how things are panning out in the area towns is hopefully being an effective uh, uh, response at this point. But we are holding our ground in Newbury with a, with a, with a pretty good number. So hopefully that'll continue. Um, some other uh, actions we are taking, uh, we, we implemented a request form that has to, uh, for any, any events that anybody wants to um, uh, pursue in town that may be COVID related or COVID concern, we have a standardized application process that gives us all the, uh, the points and, and the, uh, the, the issues that have to be addressed in the planning stage. Uh, what that does is it standardizes the approval um, of the, um, whatever the event is, it gets eyes on by myself by the health agent and we could just make sure all the boxes are ticked. And so that any events that, uh, that may want to be uh, um, occur in town, at least there's a process that's standardized that we can watch. Um, so that, that's an effect right now. It's a very, very simple uh, form. Um, there shouldn't be anything comprehensive or anything uh, labor intensive on that. Um, in other news with the, uh, the, the Council on Aging, it was brought to my attention by the Vice Chair of the Board of Directors for the Council of Aging, uh, uh, Evelyn Noyce, uh, concerned that they want to re-implement the, uh, the ban uh, for grocery runs and other errands that uh, the members of the Council on Aging uh, used to take advantage of before all this hit. Um, it, it, what the concern was being able to make it safe for the uh, occupants um, of the van. So, what I was able to do is I met with the new director, uh, Cindy Curia, delightful person. She's going to work out very well, I trust. Um, and we were able to coordinate with the um, highway superintendent uh, who issued, uh, I was able to procure a, uh, a fogger. So we've issued a fogger to the COA and the highway superintendent facilitated a training of Alice, the van driver for the COA on the utilization of that fogger. So what that, uh, what that gives them is a device that before each trip, after each trip, the van could be made safe. Um, and also the DPW has installed a uh, hand sanitizer device right inside the van. So uh, we've made that safe. We've also have an approved plan, a seating plan for the van that um, Deb Rogers, the health agent was able to take a look at and is comfortable with. So we got some things done there. Um, and you know, that was a, a great catch with Evelyn uh, to bring that to my attention. I'm glad we came up with something that I think we'll be able to get that back on the road quickly. Um, okay. Other than that, uh, other than what Tracy has said, and there's no other information that I can offer at this point. Okay. Um, also wanted to let you guys know that the ballot drop box um, has been moved. It hasn't been stolen. It's been moved intentionally in order to provide added security. Um, the box has been moved to the lobby of the police station at 25 High Road. Um, it's, so it's no longer here at 12 Kent Way. However, voters can return their completed ballots by mail or directly to the cl town clerk's office here at 12 Kent Way uh, during the following dates and times. Wednesday, October 28th from 8 to 4. Thursday, October 29th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
Monday, November 2nd from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday, November 3rd from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the clerk has, advi has advised that no ballots will be accepted at the polls on election day. They need to be brought here. Um, the Eastern Essex Department of Veterans Benefits, Karen Tyler had asked that I notify you of a Zoom presentation that's going to be held about veterans benefits. Um, it'll be conducted on November 10th at 11 a.m. She'll be discussing healthcare, disability claims, Agent Orange, welcome home bonus, um, and other benefits available to veterans. For more information, people can feel free to contact um, Karen directly at 978-356-6699 or via email at ktyler at essexvets.com. And we've al also put this information on the town's website. Um, unemployment claims. There has been a significant number of fraudulent unemployment claims. Um, so the, the Mass Department of Unemployment Assistance has notified the town to kind of be on the lookout and we are not immune. Newbury has already received 21 of them to date. So um, we're, we're paying very close attention to that right now. Um, in terms of the 14th Street Emergency Egress Project, our consultants presented the project to the Conservation Commission on the 20th, um, and some additional work has been commissioned, including the stormwater analysis and um, an update to the alternatives analysis work that had been completed previously. And we understand through um, town council that the project will also be subject to site plan review as well. Uh, on October 20th, Newbury lost one of its landmarks when Angie's service station caught fire. Uh, the Newbury Fire Department performed exceptionally, um, controlling the fire very quickly. The cause was determined to be accidental electrical according to the fire marshal's office. The DPW is seeking plowing contractors. We're still in need of someone with a loader and uh, two contractors with um, one ton plow trucks. So anyone that's interested in working for the town can contact the DPW director, James Surrett, 978-465-0112 or via email at highway at townofnewberry.org. Council on Aging, uh, we do have a new director in place, Cindy, Car uh, Cindy Currier. Um, I think she's gonna be great and certainly introduce yourself to her if you have an opportunity. Uh, right now, we're still looking to hire a program coordinator to fill the position that was left vacant by Gail Kehoe's retirement. The position has been advertised and I'm currently interviewing candidates now. Uh, I mentioned to you before, I think at the last meeting, that 19 Independence Way, the structure had been removed and our environmental consultant, Ransom, has provided a schedule for the work. It will, the site work will start on November 9th, sampling on November 16th, and then we hope to have a final report submitted to DEP by December 23rd. Um, and finally, just a reminder, Halloween, October 31st, 5.30 to 7.30. If your household doesn't wish to participate, just shut the lights out and um, hopefully we'll have a, a, a fun event. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Um, before we move on business um, about the, the fire at Angie's, it made me sad. Um, been there for a long time, really part of the identity of the island. Um, I know when I was in Little League, and it must have been in fourth grade. I remember, you know, our uniforms on the back of them, our sponsor was Angie's. When you're a kid, you don't realize really what that means. But as I get older, I look back at it and you realize it's from the generosity of the Materials family, keeping, helping to keep a Little League program alive back in the early 90s. So, um, Definitely, I wasn't personally connected, but definitely a flood of emotions and appreciate the business being in town. So moving on, uh, we have 
Two issues under old business. Let me be sure. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mike. Before we move on, um, I on on, on old, old business, uh, new business. We, can we discuss possible problems with parking on election day? Yes. Can we take that? Why don't we take that under? Can we take that under old business? I want to. Um, as long as we don't, as long as we we discuss this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have Plum Island Turnpike parking issue that was tabled from our last meeting, and we also have the Parker Street Newbury section. I'm going to jump to the Parker Street Trail Newbury section so we can get Jordy Vining and Jerry Clymer out of our meeting tonight. Okay, fine. Um, are you ready to kick that off, Martha? Uh, I think so. Jordy is going to be giving a presentation, and actually, I'm going to uh, screen share something for him. So, Jordy, do you want me to pull that up? Yes, please go ahead. All right, I will see if I can do this. We just pulled together um, maybe a dozen slides just to expand a bit on the uh, the memo with a couple of images. Um, that's at thirteen. If you want to go back to the beginning of that um, right. of that document, Martha, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> give me a moment here. I seem to be stuck on this page here. I'm not quite sure why, I apologize. Here we go. So um, I'll, I'll be relatively brief, just wanted to give everybody an overview here. Um, again, thanks for you know the opportunity to discuss this with you. Um, as the memo noted, um, basically we're collectively asking for the select board's support for pursuing grant funding and um, and designing a couple hundred feet section of the Parker Street Trail in Newberry. And um, this first slide shows the, the Four Town Coastal Trails Coalition um, network of, um, of interconnected uh, pedestrian and bicycle pathways throughout our region. Newburyport and, and Newberry have been working together for many years, I would say, 15 to 20 years to, um, to establish these off-road trail networks in, in our neighborhood, uh, along with Amesbury and Salisbury and the Coastal Trail Coalition and the state. And there's this growing interconnected uh, network that's uh, been put together over the past couple of decades. Um, Martha, next slide, please. Um, this is showing the loop uh, of the rail trail in, in our area. So we've created most of an approximately uh, four mile loop with some of it in the town of Newbury. And we're now working on filling the gaps and addressing the missing links. Martha's putting her cursor down there on, um, on Parker Street. So um, the, the loop basically, the, the loop is an important part to have a continuous off-road um, uh, corridor for pedestrians and bicyclists in Newbury and Newburyport for, uh, for public safety and recreation and transportation. Uh, next slide, please. And that's another um, aerial oblique shot showing this area. And I've sort of roughly circled the, um, the couple hundred feet that's in, in the town of Newbury there along, um, along Parker Street in between the trailhead of the existing rail trail right there and then the entrance to the cemetery. Uh, next slide, please. So um, just a few uh, slides of sort of existing conditions and existing uses. There's as probably everyone here knows, there's, there's no pedestrian or, or bicycle accommodations along Parker Street. And people have been walking along the edge and biking along the edge for quite a while. And there's essentially an increased public safety issue as more and more people are, are using this corridor. So I just thought I'd run through a couple of images. Um, this is showing a, a dog walker walking along the edge of uh, edge of the road in Newbury. Uh, next slide, please. Um, 
cell phones. There's a lot of people walk along the edge of road and they're looking at their cell phones while they're walking as, as vehicles go around them. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, that's another one of, of some other folks who were walking walking um, towards the Newbury section to, uh, to get to the trailhead. Um, next slide, please. This is, a, this is an image I took um, I, I, from, of a mother and her children who, were, who came running along the edge of Parker Street out from the, um, out from the rail trail along, along Parker, then presumably we'll be going back somewhere into, into Newbury Park. Um, next slide. So um, the city is, is working right now on, uh, on a section of this sort of missing link along Parker Street. This is, um, this is a, a graphic representation of that project. They actually started, mo just mobilized in the past couple of days. We hired a company called Aqualine. Um, some of you may have seen that they just started doing some clearing uh, along the northern edge of the street there next to Shepherd's Auto. And the, the, this project is essentially, um, essentially going to create, uh, it's about, 400 feet, I think, of uh, off-road, 10-foot wide, asphalt paved uh, rail trail um, on, the, on the edge of the roadway, off the roadway, uh, running next to the hardware store over to uh, the State Street, and then upgrading and improving the State Street intersection, which is definitely a no man's land in terms of uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. So that's going to include a crosswalk and uh, uh, pedestrian activated so-called hawk signal and uh, curbing bump outs uh, to to shorten the distance there for the crossing, um, redoing the drainage in that area and and so forth. Um, and that project we're looking they're doing some work this fall. We're expecting they'll take a break this winter and then finish up um, in the spring next year for for this section. Um, next slide, please. Um, adjacent to that between Shepherds and the cemetery entrance is this other section of the Parker Street Trail, which is, um, is anticipated to be built by, uh, by Eddie Hill and the, the Parker Hill subdivision. This is part of their, their special permit with the city of Newburyport. And so they've developed, um, they've developed plans with their consultants to do essentially the same thing, running this 10 foot wide um, paved multi-use pathway along the northern edge of um, uh, off, the, off the road, off of Parker Street. And this is, uh, we're not exactly sure when um, Eddie is going to mobilize to do this, perhaps, perhaps next summer, but that is that's sort of another piece of this puzzle that's, that's in the works. Um, next slide, Martha. That's um, th again. That's that's a rendering that um, the developer provided of the first couple of buildings going in there off of Heinz Way, and showing uh, showing the walkway. And up in the corner there, I just I just showed a picture of the the existing conditions with some people walking along the the current edge of the road. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, this is a schematic plan. This is going back in the other direction, back west, back to uh, towards Route One. So the city city project is is essentially going to connect with this Massey OT state project to bring people, bring pedestrians and bicyclists across Route One. This is um, this is a little behind us in the planning stages, but they have uh, they um, Massey OT has developed. Um, or their consultant, HSH has developed a 25% slash 75% so-called preliminary design for, uh, for installing um, the pathway along the northern edge of the rotary, and then uh, crosswalks with hawk signals to get people across, um, uh, across Route 1, and then back to the existing um, paved uh, multi-use pathway on Parker Street on the other side. 
So that's just to give a kind of a quick glimpse of, of these sort of different puzzle pieces being put together to, um, to fill this, this gap and, and this missing link, which sort of brings us back to the, the, the Newberry section. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> this is very simple. This is just me coloring on a plan, but um, I took uh, Eddie Hill's um, plan and I just colored in a, essentially where the Parker Street Trail would be generally anticipated to go in, uh, in Newbury from the cemetery entrance there um, along, along the northern edge of the road and then uh, curving in around the existing couple of parking spaces and uh, coming back into the main trail uh, there. The um, uh, next slide, please. And this just shows uh, an image of that municipal right of way um, which basically goes up to, uh, to the trees on the left-hand side of the screen in, in the cemetery. The, the cemetery fence right now is, is actually within the municipal right of way in both Newbury and Newburyport. We've worked a fair bit with the cemetery, you know, for our project, um, for Eddie Hill's project. They're going to uh, be relocating and putting in a new fence um, back on the cemetery property. Uh, but there's there's actually a considerable amount of room within the municipal right of way to to install um, the pathway. So um, those are my graphic images, and just as a quick recap on some of the content of that um, of the memo that we sent. In terms of funding, the um, I guess the proposal is that the town of Newbury should apply for a, a state mass trails grant. Um, the city, as I believe I noted, has uh, applied for and received several Mass Trails grants in the past. They're a very supportive uh, program. They've been very supportive of, um, of this network that we're, we're creating. Mass Trails can fund the, um, the survey and design and, and permitting phase of such a project. And um, Jerry Klima, who's, who's here tonight, he can speak to this, but um, it, it, it appears that the, the Coastal Trails Coalition, the nonprofit CTC, is prepared to provide the, um, the match required for, uh, for such a um, design phase grant project. And the, um, the engineering firm TEC that, um, that the city has been working with on the Parker Street section, they've, they've offered to, to write the grant um, if the town of Newbury would like to proceed with that. So um, that, is the, that is the basic overview. I think, um, I think we've, we've, we've all been working for many years uh, to put all this together. It's, it's a pretty popular corridor and um, we'd love to see over the next few years, this uh, sort of final gap being, being filled in. So with that, I'll end my, my monologue, I guess, and see if there's any discussion or questions that I or, or Martha, or I guess maybe um, Gary Klima might want to chime in. And shall I stop sharing now? Is there any, anything else you want to show, Jordy? Um, that's, that's fine. I'm all set. OK, I would entertain a motion so we can get into some question and answer and discussion. I move that the town of Newbury apply for um, the grant. What's it called, Martha? What's mass the name trails. of the grant? Mass Trails. A Mass Trails grant to complete oh. this portion on Parker Street. I'll second that. Okay, discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mike. Um, first of all, Jerry, I want to thank you. It's like this is something I've been waiting to see done for a long time. Uh, do you know how much the money, how much money is going to cost for the new reef to be finished? Do you have any idea? Uh, Jordy, Jordy has, I think, the best information about costs. Um, Jordy. Sure. If, um, you know, we, we have basically just sort of rule of thumb costs at this point, um, as we've talked to TEC and we've looked at, um, looked at the Newburyport's portion, which is, maybe twice as long. So um, 
I don't have numbers here right in front of me, but if my if my memory serves, um, based on talking to TEC about um, survey and design and permitting, I believe that uh, all told, that's an approximately fifty thousand um, uh, dollar phase, and um, with with the CTC um, providing the twenty or twenty five percent match um, for that. And then once the, the plans and the permits have been developed, we're, we're guessing that maybe it's 175,000, maybe it's $200,000, something along those lines, if it's, um, if it's similar to, um, to the trail that, uh, that the city's building. And again, Mass Trails, um, Mass Trails has grant funding to help support construction they typically go up to 100,000, but they go up to 300,000 for multi-town um, projects and projects that, uh, that connect uh, sort of regionally in towns. And there are the CTC and others will be available, I think, to, um, to help with that, local charitable foundations and so forth when we, when we get to that point. So I'm not trying to be, um... Could we start a GoFundMe account too in Newbury just to like, if I, a lot of people use this trail, a lot of people want to see this finish. So would it, would that be possible without screwing up a fund, a grant? Of course. Oh, okay. definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a couple other questions since I'm on. Uh, parking is an issue on Parker Street. And when this gets finished, I can only see it getting worse. Uh, is there any, I have we talked about when we do our end of it, as far as increasing parking down there. And I'm, I'm just throwing out some issues. Uh, and yeah. my, only, my only other issue is for new report is when you get to the end of Parker Street where Lutton Kelly says, as an automobile, the, you know, somebody coming out of that intersection, people fly out of that rotary upstate. We've, we've already had one person killed. Right. Um, I'm wicked concerned about the, the rental agency. They park their cars double deep. So you can't see around that corner what's coming down the thing. And you, people just keep edging out farther and farther. So I'm not sure, has anyone ever talked to the the, um, the rental agency to find out if they can open up the, the, the line of view because it, there's, their second line of cars is really blocking the, the, the cars coming out of Parker Street, out of Newbury. I agree with everything you're saying, Mike, um, and we, there's actually been a fair amount of, of, of discussion and consideration of some of those issues um, in terms of the cars that come zapping out of the rotary going northbound on State Street. That's part of what the city's project, uh, so-called Complete Streets project, is, is focusing on by in, installing this, um, this push-button uh, hawk signal so uh -huh. that Right now, there's no traffic controls, right? And people just fly through there. Yeah, fly so, down. Yeah, so this, the, the Hawk signal has been, um, been designed by TEC to provide some control there. It's not a sort of full on traffic signalized intersection that's uh, considered not to be warranted there. But when pedestrians and bicyclists are crossing, then they can, um, they can tap that and the cars will have to stop coming out of, um, of the rotary as well as in other drivers. Yeah. Thank you very much. And in terms of uh, the rental agency, I have actually talked with the rental agency about that as well as MassDOT. Um, it's complicated because the area that those cars double park is on, on the, the state property within the rotary. And the um, We've been encouraging the state to try to do something to push them back um, a bit so that we can have better sight lines there. It's, um, we've not been able to get them at this point to uh, do, uh, the, the state that is, to do a sort of major reworking of that corner um, because it gets into uh, right of way and easement issues and drainage issues, which they've said they don't they don't want to deal with. So from our perspective, we share those concerns that you were voicing. Um, and I believe that we need to implement the project that's currently being uh, starting up construction, see where that gets us, and then um, 
and then return to talking to all these different stakeholders about whether we can try to address that corner better. The, well, the track will be brought farther forward on Parker Street as part of this project, rather than stopping way back at that little stop sign. Right, and, okay. So what, what state agency could the town reach out to to kind of like say, you know, oh, we have a lot of newbie residents that use that road. And yeah, it's, said, what it's, state uh, it, it's mass, sorry, it's mass DOT, uh, mass Department DOT. of Transportation. Yeah. Um, I can send Martha contact information. Um, they've just assigned a new state project manager to, uh, to this project of theirs. Um, that they're putting together for the rotary. He, uh, he frankly, I, I don't believe he knows that much about the project at this point, but he, he will be a point of contact going forward. So please send that to Martha, thank you. Okay, very good. Hey, oh. uh, Jeff. Um, my only concern would be if we start to plow the various trails in the winter that I don't know how they handle snow with a New England winter if there's a lot of it along the sides of the roads because of visibility of people popping out. So that would be my only concern. They'd have to put some sort of management plan in place because the big wing plows head right down the road there. So if I may, Mr. Chairman, can I, shall I respond yes, to that? Um, yeah, we've been thinking about the same things, Jeff, in terms of the sections in, um, in Newburyport, as well as the, um, the Ed Hills section in between. The, um, the trail is going to be offset from the road. So there's, there's several feet along the edge of the road before you get to the trail. There's also gonna be a guardrail, timber guardrail running along in between the, uh, the trail and the road. So basically some room has been engineered into the, the landscape there for, uh, for snow storage. Um, Jerry, did you have your hand up? I did. Uh -huh. um, Ms. Devining, um, do you have a, a feel for whether, whether or not we have a good shot at uh, getting this grant? And if we don't get the grant, what happens? I think you have a very good shot at it. Um, the, um, the, the grant administrator, Amanda, is very supportive of, um, of this project and the sort of phased approach to putting, putting it together and, and, uh, and connecting these gaps. Um, so they're, they've been very supportive of the larger, the larger picture as well as um, we think this, you know, this particular section and if one doesn't get this particular grant, there's 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 always another round um, to apply for. So that's on occasion that's been the city's situation where we've applied for a grant, haven't gotten it, been encouraged to apply again the next round, and then have gotten it. Great, I it, I think it's a very worthwhile uh, endeavor. I I wish us I wish us luck. Great. Any other questions or comments from the board? I do have one question. Um, the the parking issue it, is is there a trailhead um, on the Parker Street end where cars park and pedestrians access the trail that that way? Yes, that's right. And Mike had, had asked that, and I forgot to answer that. Um, so I worked a lot with the board about. A decade ago, Jeff was there then, others, um, where we were talking a lot about parking along Parker Street and around this trailhead area. And the, um, the approach that the, the board uh, ended up supporting was having just a couple of parking spaces there at the trailhead. So currently there's, there's two or three spaces in a handicap spot um, as required by law. I think there's there's room physically room to to fit one more spot in which hasn't hasn't been striped although, although people use it. So there's there's clearly there's limited parking there. If the board is interested, you know we can um, 
you know, we can all work together to revisit the question of parking along Parker Street if that's something um, if that's something the town of Newbury would like to to look into again. Um, it, there's pros and cons, right, to trying to trying to incorporate that into the project. At this point, the way we've envisioned it is is to retain the existing parking as well as formalizing that sort of one additional space that I was just mentioning, but then essentially have the trail connection go around it so that there's a continuous trail connection, but then this this small trailhead parking area. Um, okay. Yeah. That's yeah, no, yeah, that answers it because I wasn't sure if there was with the new plan was to eliminate that parking, uh, keep the parking or expand it. Um, I think it would be preferable to keep it keep it as it is, if, if at all possible. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to pursue grant funding for the completion of the Newbury leg of the rail trail. Um, I will go to a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby? Yes. Uh, thank you for your time tonight, Gordy and Jerry. Jordy and, and Jerry. <laughs> Thanks for your hard work on this too, Martha. So, Great. Thank, thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate your support. We'll uh, we'll work work uh, daily going forward on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on to old business, and I'll get to your topic, Mike. Um, we have a Plum Island Turnpike parking issue that was tabled from the last meeting. Mm. So are there any new new developments, uh, John? Yep. Um, a week ago yesterday, we met with the uh, owners of uh, Bob Lobster and discussed some of the concerns. And it's kind of two levels of concern here. There's the the town way, the public way concerns that uh, that we inform them of our resolve being changing the signage to uh, no stopping along uh, the, the turnpike. Um, and there was also a discussion and they were, they were fine with that. They understood that uh, there, were, there were no concerns there. So they were brought into that dialogue. The only loose end that we uh, left with was some of the delivery concerns or some of the traffic on their property, how it adversely affects the flow um, periodically uh, of the turnpike traffic, especially when there's being deliveries, trucks are delivering uh, product there. Uh, the way that was left is I was going to observe, they, they, they have, I think it's every other Friday, and Tracy can remind me in case I'm uh, misremembering that, but uh, every other Friday, uh, the Coca-Cola truck, which is, it seems to be the biggest uh, concern, uh, delivers there, and it causes a bit of a traffic obstruction. So the plan is when they were taking, taking the delivery, which I'm assuming is going to be this Friday, they're going to let me know when they have a rough time frame. I'm going to be there just to observe it. And we're going to get into a dialogue about possible resolutions there, uh, what we can do to make that less of a, an impact in the area. The good news is right now it's slower. Um, so it's easier to step back and see how, how we can do things, you know, uh, and, uh, and be prepared, have some solutions hopefully in place for the next, you know, when the busy season starts up again for them. But uh, the dialogue is open. Uh, the uh, resolve for the immediate concerns for the parking on the turnpike was addressed. Um, we're all on the same page and we're just kind of working through how it adversely affects, you know, when the deliveries are happening, how that has a problem, you know, uh, adversely affects the, uh, the, the passage through there. And there was also uh, some concerns uh, as far as residential, you know, uh, you know uh, parking, you know, th th that may or may not be being obstructed, you know, there, you know, that we're working through a few things there that Tracy may be able to expound on a little bit more um, from the town's perspective there, but from a public safety perspective, we're all set you know, as far as um, having that dialogue open. Okay, um, and if you could just circle us back so we can form a coherent motion here, okay. what exactly you're asking for? You're asking for no standing signs? Yeah, I'd like to replace the, um, the, the no parking signs that are currently exist on the turnpike 
to you know an immediate area of Bob Lobster to be replaced with no no stopping signs, not no standing, but no stopping. Um, and whether the board wants to extend that for the full length of the turnpike might not be a bad idea because you know uh, Bob Lobster traffic situations they aren't the only concern that's raised on that turnpike. There are times when there's people stopping you know for for photographs, you know to uh, to paint the landscape. You know that you know there are a lot of things going on, especially uh, in the summertime. You know uh, when people are stopping there, so we might. As a board, you might decide you might want to continue that, that whole uh, message right down the turnpike, but at least at a minimum in the area of the biggest concern right now uh, around Bob Lobster. Okay. I, don't know so, if I simplified your motion. <laughs> right. So the, the, the chief's motion was to replace a, a, the chief's re recommended motion is to replace the no parking signs in the vicinity of Bob Lobster with, with no stop. Correct. So would someone like to make a motion? I'll make the motion that we change the signs from no parking to no stopping in the vicinity of Bob's Lobsters on the other side of the street. Is it on both? You want on both sides, Chief, or one side? I, I think both sides would be the would be the most effective. That would help the residents in the immediate area as well as the traffic flow on the opposite side. So I would recommend both sides. Okay, well, we're going to run into what I, I met with the owners of Bob Lobster yesterday. All right, hold on a sec, Michael. Why don't we get a second? Then we can get into discussion. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. Okay, discussion. All right, so I met with the owners of Bob, and they're fine with, I was under the impression it was only, they, they were fine with the other side of the street. Um, but also, the the delivery truck is not just an issue for, them it's also an issue for every business on the island those they they stop at i think they said 13 other stops on the island and they have the same issue when they stop at the beach coma when they stop at the palm island grill when they stop at the package store okay when they stop at it, they have the same issue it's the truck's a big truck you can't bring it into a lot and for 15 minutes and it's 15 minutes while they make their load it's it's going to be an issue um they also stated that it's that's the only that's the only it's only going to be once a month, okay, during the winter months. So it's only it's 15 minutes a month during the summer. It's 15 minutes. I think it's every tw twice a month. So I have a question. Go ahead. What does this have to do with the parking signs? Because if you put no parking on both sides, the truck is not going to be able to park. Period to deliver. See my Chief point. Chief, can you respond to that? Well, as a as a compromise to that situation, well, there's two things we can do. We can uh, you can vote to have the no stopping on the opposite side, and we can bring this back up again when we have more clarity as to what's happening with the trucks, and we can keep it no parking on the side on the on the restaurant side because no parking and no standing. Um, if that's enough of a deterrent on that side, the bigger problem is on the opposite side. So that's the bigger problem that I'm seeing. The opposite side, uh, you know, on the restaurant side, if we wanna keep it as no parking, that still affords um, the deliveries because you know, no parking, it's okay to stop for, you know, if you're disembarking or unloading product. I mean, it's, it's specific in the statute. So if you wanna just go with the no stopping on the opposite side and we can still, you know, keep an eye on what's happening on the no parking side, uh, if that seems to be working, my bigger concern is, you know, when the when the uh, when it gets busy there, that's a bike lane, and you know, and I I I have a problem with sanctioning vehicles to, you know, it, it, suggesting it's okay to block that that lane and force bicyclists and pedestrians and joggers to have to go around into traffic to navigate around, even if it is for 15 minutes. Um, I would. But like Chief, doesn't it happen all over the island though when this when this truck goes down the island? The the concern that's brought to my attention right now is there, and that's the major throughway, major access to the island. That's the heaviest pedestrian, heaviest bicycle traffic. That's the heaviest traffic there, um, and so it may, uh, Mr. Doyle. But I'm not. I, that no other issues have been brought to my attention, nor have I seen any other issues that concern me as much as what I see on the turnpike. So it, it's. It seems that it would make sense to phase it. We'll start with the other side of the road and see how it goes. I think that's basically represented in Mike's motion. 
Should I should I make a, another motion so it's clearer? Yeah. Uh, I I would make a motion that going towards Plum Island that we change the no parking signs to no stopping, and on the left side going towards Plum Island we retain the no parking signs as they are. And if that's not clear, someone can tag on to that. It's still Jeff. It's still we have the issue of the the delivery trucks. For I mean, it's still going to be they can if they can't park there to deliver. How do they get the deliveries on it? Like with a coke truck? Right. Is that um, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. The, the chief was amenable to to monitoring the delivery truck situation to see how it goes. All right. Okay. Yeah, I mean that. Hold on, sorry. Um, what I just want to make clear here is I'm, I'm speaking from a public safety perspective in trying to present the best solution on a public public safety. Uh, I don't want to make, I don't want to sound crass or insensitive, but my concern is making the you know making it safe for passage on our public way. Um, I, and secondary is the facilitation of the business to be able to operate. Now I'm not slamming the door. I you know, if the board decides they want to just keep it the same on the restaurant side, that that's you know that's that's up to the board and as the compromise, at least getting one side done with the no stopping. Um, but I just want to you know, make it clear. I really think that both sides in that area should be no stopping and let me figure out what to do, you know, if anything, to help give some advice or some solution to the restaurant to facilitate their deliveries. But um, I'm just saying, I just want to make my position clear. I, I have a problem with any kind of vehicles sanctioned in any way, stopping, obstructing the bike lanes in the pedestrians on uh, going on and off the island because in the summertime it's busy uh, and we just have the luxury right now where we can see if we can come up with a solution because it's quiet and maybe we can but you know I just if there's going to be a compromise that that's what I was putting forward the stopping on one side and no parking on the restaurant side um, but that's that that's that's a compromise that the board can decide on uh, you know but from a public safety perspective I'm just saying that any obstruction on either one of those lanes um, is not advisable. Chief. So, go ahead, go ahead, Melissa. So can the delivery trucks, they have a parking lot. Can the delivery trucks pull into their parking lot the truck, and unload? The truck is too big according to uh, when I spoke to Brad yesterday. The truck is, I guess the truck is huge. And I that's why I offered that, you know, I mean, I'm clear, I, I'd help to, I, I want to help them solve the problem. I, I, I want to see it happen, see what we can do, you know, I, and I trust, you know, Brad's assessment of it, of course, you know, but um, again, my priority is going to always be public safety, and then I'm going to do everything I can after that to help them facilitate whatever they need to be successful there. Um, so the door isn't shut to help them. Uh, I guess I, you know, I just want that. That's it. That's all. I just want to make clear about what my position was because I didn't want to go sideways a little. Chief, um, yes, one one of my other concerns is a little bit farther down, the pink house. Okay, people stop there all the time to take pictures of the pink house. Yep. If you get a snowy owl there in the winter, <laughs> it's yes, like sir. Yes, it's sir. like it's like Bob Lobster. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah. So I it, I would feel more comfortable going down the whole length of the pipe there because you, I, I agree with you, the concern for the bike path and at least is there, okay? So I would say, I would, my recommendation to the board would be all the way down, past the pink house too. I don't know what you, how you feel about that. Again, as I said early on, you know, sure. I mean, that's definitely, because you're absolutely right. Um, when it's when there's an event happening out there, whether it's people painting, whether it's photo you know, photo opportunities, whether it's the snowy owls that that are showing up there, it turns really bit crazy out there. Um, I mean, with with the with the, with the people stopping. Um, and, and my problem from a public safety perspective is we are making a distinction on our roadway, saying this is for you folks. This is the, this this lane is you know designated for you to walk, you to ride, you to you know do your business. Um, here and then, you know, and then to have the obstruction, the only way they can go around in any kind of an obstruction is into traffic. Um, and that's what I have, a, I, that's what I have an issue with. And so, and I, you know, as far as running it right down the turnpike, you know, Mr. Walker, 
he uh, he mentioned in the last meeting, you know, and he and he and he brought that you know uh, that that reference up too, and it makes a lot of sense, you know. Um, but the immediate concern right now, the biggest concern, obviously, is the area of the restaurant. But you know, the rest of the uh, the turnpike is sure. I mean, I would agree with that. Hey, Jerry, did you have your hand up? I did. Um, I I kind of like the the motion. Um, that was made because uh, it is a compromise and we may have to revisit this whole issue again when the weather gets better in the spring and in the summer. So, you know, we may have to deal with it again. So at least we've, we've, we've started to uh, deal with the, with the problem. So. I which, which motion, Jerry? Mike's, mo um, Mike's or mine? Which motion are we doing? Yours. Okay. Right. Thank you. And I, I agree with that. With Jeff's. Any other questions or comments on the matter tonight? No, can Julie reread the motion, please? So the one I have that Jeff said he wanted to move, that one going towards Plum Island on the right-hand side, we change no parking to no stopping signs, and on the left-hand side, remain as no parking. Does that sound correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll move to a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby? Okay, thank you, John, for uh, your attention to that matter. Okay, Mike, you, you had uh, election concerns you wanted to mention. Yeah. Um, the project is going along really well. However, there's still the part, the members of the parking of the workers are parking on the street, which they can do. Uh, we have no parking on the other side of the street, which is fine. However, my concern was, uh, we, we talked about the fire at Angie's. Okay. That day, um, there was no parking on the street for the firemen when they came in. So they were three deep from the front door of the, of the fire hall entrance all the way out to the street. Okay, because there's no parking. Uh, the, par the firemen have lost half their parking to the project. So my concern is, God forbid, there's a fire on election day. Um, there's there's going to be a problem down there. Um, and, and, the, and they've promised me, the chiefs promised me that the side lot is going to be cleared out for election. And we have to advertise that to the people that they can park there in the side lot. Um, but I'm all, it's like, I'm not sure where else we can put parking if we're going to keep. I agree. I talked this with Alicia earlier, and she says I don't want to, you know, move move the site possibly. But if we're going to keep the site where it is, which I understand is only a week away now, and we probably can't move it, we have to come up with some kind of a plan. So there's parking. God forbid there's another fire during election day. Um, about three months ago. I wonder how the election was gonna go. I spoke to then Chief uh, Michael Riley and also the um, and Chief John Lucy about it. And they said they indeed have a plan. John, would you like to enlighten us as to what your plans are for election day? Absolutely. Okay, there's several, several things we put in play that are going, that I'm very confident we're all, we're, we'll be fine. Um, I did talk to the fire chief to make sure that he had it, you know, no concerns. Uh, and his only concern was that the, the front doors of the fire station were not blocked. And so obviously that's that's not gonna happen. He also brought the concern about, you know, if there was an incident where, you know, the responders could park and I'll get into that. Um, I had conversation with Dan, uh, Stan Dixon from the, uh, the, um, the fire museum across the street from us. He has given us permission to park whatever we need to, whenever we need to on election day there. We can, we can go right across and block in his, um, his, uh, even his roll up, roll up door. He had no issues with that. He was very, very understanding, very cooperative. Uh, I've talked to the construction crew, uh, the, the foreman uh, on, on three different occasions, four counting today. Um, they are putting down the binder uh, of the parking lot um, in, at the work site. And that's why all the material is out. They're doing that tomorrow. Okay. Uh, he, he has assured me um, last week when this was first brought to my attention Last Wednesday at the construction meeting, I, I reaffirmed it. Today, I have reaffirmed it, re, re, re reaffirmed it. Um, that all that material is going to be gone by Thursday, no later than Friday. 
Um, I've made the uh, assertion to him that no excuses, no anything, it's going um, by the end of the week. Not even Monday, not even, you know, the day before the election, it has got to be gone by Friday. And he said, absolutely no problem. So all that material that's on the side of the station, now if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, there's a side lot of our building and there's about 20 spaces uh, right along the building that's all occupied right now with construction material because they had to get it off the site so they could pave the, uh, the site and now they're gonna put it back on the site. So all that's going back on the site before the end of the week. So all that, pit, that parking there will be available. Uh, my personnel are going to be parking along the other side, sharing that with the vote workers, which we know is plenty because we, that's the way we always do it. So there's plenty of room for the voting uh, workers and my personnel and our crews on, uh, on the north side of the building. The front of the building, I've already talked to the fire chief, uh, is going, the whole front of the lot is for firefighter overflow if we have to, um, you know, but there's plenty of places for them to park. And there's going to be a police officer assigned to nothing but traffic on this event from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night to facilitate anything that comes up. He'll be there on scene. Anybody that shows up and, and might be confused about where to park or needs help parking, that's what that job of that officer is going to be to give direction and, and assistance. Uh, uh, Morgan Ave will continue to be one way. So you know that'll make it so that if we have to utilize the parking along the construction fence, uh, that will be that could be for the for the firefighters if we have to if it's available it, you know and we have plenty of room even with the vote going on if firefighters respond to an emergency they can park there or if we need a little bit of overflow for voters if there's a big surge of voting we can use all that um, the foreman of the construction site has made it perfectly clear and I've made it perfectly clear with him that all construction vehicles will be located on site. Uh, for the for the full day Tuesday, I do not want to see a van. I don't want to see anything with a ladder on top of it outside that work site um, for Tuesday. And if something happens and somebody slips through the crack, I I assure you, my officer will be making uh, the corrections to get that vehicle out of the way. Uh, let me see. Did I miss anything? Um, nope. I think. Oh, the other wild card that I have, the wild card that I have that I'm going to play tomorrow is I'm gonna to talk to the uh, Newburyport Savings to see if we have it, if we have a catastrophic, like, or, you know, whatever uh, going on that we need more parking, that they'll let us use the, uh, the parking that they have that's away from their building and closest to us. I haven't gotten that permission yet. I don't expect that I'll have a problem, but I, I am going to solicit that tomorrow. So that is the plan. I have 100% confidence that it, it'll, it'll deal with any issues we have. And uh, Mr. Doyle, the fire department full-time staff will be parked uh, you know, with the, uh, with in the uh, front of the station or off to the side there. So the whole side of the building where the, uh, where the uh, voters need to walk in and out will, will have that, play, that area as well, especially for handicapped or people that have a hard time getting around, they can get right up close to the voting site at the direction and the assistance of my officer. Good job, Chief, thank you. Okay. okay. Very you, well Chief. done. And I oh. think in the, in the light of that it's pandemic, like uh, in voter turnout, I don't think people are, are voting early. Um, I don't think we're gonna have a surge of um, voters coming, but at least we are prepared. Thank you, John. Okay, uh, Jeff. John, I might've missed it and you might've mentioned it, but in past presidential elections too, when it really gets busy, you know, and you've opened up the parking along the side there, but I mean, I've parked up in front of the police station and walked down before too. And so, I mean, your guys are gonna probably get along the other side there the best they can. So there'll be a couple of parking spaces even in that lot too, won't there? Yep, yeah, we have everything, you know, my, I was planning for a worst case scenario. I was planning for, I hate to say this, I don't wanna use this as an example, but, Mr. Doyle, you gave the segue, you know, the Angie situation, you know, right. was that happening. I mean, if we have an emergency, I want to, I'm, I'm planning for the worst case scenario. Full confidence will be fine. Just so the board can see, I'm not sure you can see on my picture. I'm going to try it up. That's the parking lot, the day of Angie's fire, which it's, it's hard to sell, but it was pretty packed. Yeah. Okay. So it's like I said, I just want the board to see it. So I, I sent the pictures to Alicia. I know that. So, All the obstacles that cause that will be gone. Right. So I, once again, thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Okay. 
Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Uh, we have correspondence. We received a couple letters from the Division of Mass Fisheries on October 14th and October 17th with uh, clam flat closures. We have received various emails regarding the proposed gas station on Central Street. Um, we received 25 letters in opposition this month, none in support. Uh, we received an uh, email from Margaret McDonald Alphoni uh, regarding election results. And Jim Moran sent us a letter for items for consideration under citizens' concerns. We have some meeting updates. Um, Master plan update. There's been some discussion on different boards about reviving the master plan a few years ago. A ton of work was done on the master plan. There's still some work to do um, with the, the rebound of the economy and the building, I don't know if craze is the right way, but the, the building boom that's going on right now, planning has been absolutely buried in work. That's part of the reason for the delay in this and they are still buried in work. Um, Martha Taylor, uh, Marshall Jesperson, Alicia, and myself um, met just to have an informal discussion about reviving the master plan. And uh, do, you have, do you have any comments about it, Alicia? No, it was a good meeting. I think um, the town administrator was there as well as um, the chair of the planning board. And um, no, and they, we're going to we're going to find a way to find uh, we're going to find a way to whatever's been completed is going to you know get put together, find out what's lacking, update any data that we need to do, and get this. Um, the master plan completed because the last time we had a master plan was 2006 um and then i think Martha, before that you said it was 1980 so this is very very much needed and it's really a guiding document in how the how the town um should uh look at itself when it comes to financial planning and land use planning and it's it's a it should be a guiding beacon and we need it so we've got it started we got a good job on it, hopefully, and hopefully we'll just, you know, pick up the ball and carry it over the finish line. The, the consensus we left with was we'll spend the next month or maybe a little more um, reorganizing the information, figuring out where we are, what needs to be completed. And uh, given the workload on the planning board and the planning department at this time, determining what elements really need planning personal fingerprints on them and maybe and see if there are some elements that are nearly complete or can be completed uh, with a little bit of outside help just to alleviate the workload on, on the planning department, not planning board, because again, they are absolutely buried in public hearings and proposals right now. So that's just a little update on where that stands. Uh, more to come in the future. We have a recreation committee update Yes, I should have given this at our last meeting and I apologize for not doing it. Um, we had an Eagle Scout come before the board um, a few months ago with a proposal to build handicapped accessible um, picnic <laughs> benches at, and put them um, at Mantra Field. And um, they have been complete. I went out there, I saw them. They're absolutely wonderful. They're painted to match um, the red building. Um, they're really, really well done. I'd like to say thank you to Tom Valpone for um, completing it with his, e this was his Eagle Scout project. Um, if you get an opportunity to get out that way, the board members, I'd like you to go out and take a look at it. And it's just great to see what these Eagle Scouts can do, can do for us. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Thank you to the Volpones and yes, a, brilliant. a worthwhile Eagles project. Yeah. And then Mr. Chairman, I also have a quick update on the school committee. The school started today. I did reach out to um, the chairman of the uh, school committee as well as the superintendent 
and that what I heard was that um, the I'm trying to pop up their note right now um, that the um, the district moved to the hybrid model beginning today. It went it went well. Um, there's going to be a district communication committee meeting on the fourth of November, and then we'll get more of a formal update and. And the uh, superintendent said it actually went very, very well. Um, there may have been some few hiccups for families that were staying remote, but overall it went really well and everyone was thrilled to have the students back in front of them. So let's just hope they can stay that way for a while and keep those kids in school because they really need to be in school. Yeah, it was my and that's it. in Triton today and I was anxious to grill him when he got home. He said he thought it was <laughs> He thought things went pretty smoothly, but it was strange sitting in individual desks in the lunchroom, socially distanced. And I said, did you guys talk at all? And he said, not really. It was pretty difficult. <laughs> so yeah. Things seemed to go go pretty well. So I was relieved. To hear that. Good to have the kids back. Hopefully, for everyone's sake, things go well. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick thing. Uh, did he come back home with the same mask he left with in the morning? <laughs> he did. He didn't trade. Okay. So he might see a cooler right. one in trade. You never know when you <laughs> gotta be careful. Of that. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, we have uh, minutes to approve from October thirteenth, twenty twenty. Good, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Jerry. Um, I would object to the minutes. They don't reflect the discussion that we had uh, at this meeting. In fact, on for instance, on the Fourteenth uh, Street evacuation plan. I mean, we spoke about it for about 15, 20 minutes. There, there's no indication that there was any kind of discussion where we asked for the history, were there any objections, um, you know, because, and if I, we had gotten that information, I would not have voted for it because it's tantamount to a taking uh, of land for the abutters there. So these, these do not reflect our, our conversation, our discussion. Uh, I'd like to know why. It, um, essentially, essentially, it says it, it, it's the motion and how we voted. There's absolutely nothing that says what we discussed in that in that area, particularly it's it's void. Why? Also, in, in the peg money, which I was attempting to tell Mr. Moran that tonight it's not up for discussion. It's next uh, our next meeting. But again, um, very little, very little uh, details. I mean, don't these have to be accurate or, or should, should we have a footnote that says if you want accurate uh, information, go to the uh, YouTube and, and watch the, the meetings? Yeah. Generally, can, now that we're in the age of television, I know in my time here, the television footage has also been considered a generation of minutes. So it, it is really doubled, but as far as format of minutes or detail of minutes, to answer that because I facilitate the meetings. I don't take the minutes and that's not my area of expertise. Right, right. I, I, I realize that and I'm not holding you to it, but I'm just saying, uh, you know, we're reviewing these minutes and the minutes should be redone. To so where, can you tell me what page you're looking at, Jerry? What, what page? I mean, they're not page numbered, but if you start with the first one being page because one. It says emer okay. Okay. Uh, it's the it's the third it's the third from the back page. It says emergency evacuation route on 14th Street. And it has the motion. It has what your initial comment, Mr. Colby, and then uh, Mr. Walker's motion and then the roll call vote. And that's it. And we spoke about this for at least 15 to 20 minutes. No information. If I may, uh, based on the training that was provided to us by council, we've been advised that minutes are not to be verbatim, that now that we have the videos, minutes should reflect motions, votes, other than public hearings. Public hearings are different, but in normal um, meeting minutes, um, now that we have the video, we shouldn't have to provide as much detail. 
Um, but but yeah, I, I suppose other, that's up to whatever the individual board wants to see. Well, in other areas of the of the minutes, you do include uh, conversation and discussion. So I think I think that it should be included a little bit more than just the vote. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not asking for verbatim, but I think that there should be more in the way of what was discussed. Or you need to put a caveat to say these are not accurate and go, go look at the YouTube and the video for an accurate description. Because otherwise it looks like we just voted. We did right. nothing, we had, no call, we had no discussion, we just voted. And frankly, I wouldn't have voted had, had the information been provided about the abutters, how there was huge opposition down there. I wouldn't the, video, have the video footage of the last meeting reflects that though, correct? It does. It does. But, 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 but it doesn't show the minutes. But so I mean, really, the question really the question is: Do we want to make duplicitous work for people? I'm not saying no. Or can we what? accept the can we accept written meeting minutes in shorthand because the video is a record, and also the shorthand in our packet is a record. But the essence of minutes is to tell what went on. This doesn't tell what went on. So I, I, I understood, I always understood that minutes should reflect um, the, co the content, the subject of what, what you were um, voting on, and then a motion, and then the vote. Um, and it's been a long time, years, that I took minutes. Um, I'm going digging back to when I was the secretary in the PTA, but I can remember them saying that minutes should not reflect discussion, should not reflect any of that other stuff. They should just reflect the vote. Now, that being said, I think a little more um, contextual um, input around this should have, you know, maybe a sentence or two about that, but I, I, just to go back to kind of this 14th Street thing, I think I think you're confused, Jerry. That that this wasn't a public hearing, and no. that the what what the boat what, no let, let me finish, Mike. What the boat what the board voted to do? What I understood the board voting to do was to move this into um, the public hearing phase so that we could hear all of that stuff, so that the conservation can, commission can hear it, and. Um, Th that it's really, I mean, we uh, we have to stay in our in our lanes. I mean, we don't we set policy. We don't we're not the Wetlands Protection Act thing, you know, venue. We don't do any any of that. And that, and I understood that by putting this forward, um, it was going to get the appropriate vetting, and all of that was going to come out. I mean, the stuff that was we the town had, I believe, wasn't even with the board of selectmen. It was with the conservation commission, and I, I don't know. Correct me if I'm if I'm wrong or if I misunderstood or something, but I, I think that the board of selectmen didn't have any information, or the select board, I should say, didn't have that inf information. No, it didn't. And I asked, and Mr. Doyle asked, was there any objection? Did the abutters on 14th Street know about it? And we were told, I don't know. I, and we weren't given the information that we requested. And I, and I, and I did meet with the 14th Street. Now, we got, we got to remember this isn't on the agenda for discussion. We're discussing meeting minutes in the act. Right. Yes, however, however, <laughs> the, that was discussed. And I don't know why there's discussion early on the, uh, in our minutes. So why are we hunting and pecking? and giving discussion on some things, but not in other things. I mean, there's some due process issues here. Um, and minutes, minutes have more than just a vote and a motion. That's why they're called minutes. So let's- um, Can I just be one second? I'll let yeah. Mike. Just I'll one allow second. Alicia to, allow Alicia to speak, we'll get to you. Okay. I've had my so one hand. I think that perhaps Julie is very new and maybe I don't know if this is something that can be addressed. We're having our our training next week with town council. Um, I think maybe this this can be addressed too. And if there's anything that 
any type of a of a, a training that Julie can take to help her better serve her position with us might be helpful. And as far as the minutes go, um, there's footage of every one of our meetings. It's publicly accessible to people at home. I think it would be a very, very rare occurrence for someone to not have the ability to watch our meetings either live or on the internet and come to the office here and request minutes for a 100% verbatim account of any one of our meetings. It just, it seems logical that the video provides the end all be all of minutes. And I mean, I watched, I watched Ellen for quite a few years. It can, some of these public hearings and some of our meetings, it can take days to review and generate the minutes. It can take days on end all the while, while staff trying to keep up with things as they come through the door. It's, again, I just feel like it's, it's duplicitous work to demand a word for word minutes and where do you draw the line? Well, minutes are, are important and I think that they need to reflect a motion, a second and a vote. Um, some context I think is important, but I don't think, I think that's the basic and I could be wrong. So I'm looking forward to our training next week because I wanna ask that, that question. Okay, Mike. Two things, so if you go back two more pages, we have discussion, okay? And on, so we, we are doing it already. And I agree with Jerry, okay? I, I specifically asked on this thing, is there any history? And there was, I was basically the silence. And when I get off, when the next day I find out there's an extensive history. So I, would, I agree but with But I don't Jerry. know if that history was with the Board of Selectmen. That's well, my <laughs> point. Yeah, well, there's a history. I, I asked if there was a history on this project, okay? But and Mike, if it's not before the Board of Selectmen, but it was we the can't board of do anything about it. Well, that was right. my, I mean, I didn't think, think there was anything before the board. Well, so I'm saying, I yes. agree with Jerry, these minutes are not complete. Maybe it would be beneficial at a future meeting we can discuss how we view minutes and maybe how they're accounted for going forward in the format they're done. So I would like to make a motion to have these minutes re re revised before we vote on them tonight. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Um, we can I amend that? Um, that we how I would rather move to table these until after our training, and then revisit it. I, I'm still going to request that. These most these meeting this these minutes be adjusted. Well, we have to. I think we have to approve the. I think the motion on the table is to approve the minutes. So, I think that um, I'd like to amend that motion to table the minutes until after our cons our um, training on Monday night. Or is it no? It's this Monday night or next Monday? I forget. When it was eleven two? Next, was it this Monday, Monday night? Next Monday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah next, so and then and then we'll get trained. We'll find out the appropriate thing to do with minutes, and then we can address them at our next at our next meeting. Okay. That's right. what that's what I like. Um, Mr. Walker has his hand up. Um, two quick things. Amending the minutes is not a big deal. If Jerry and Mike want to put a few things in the minutes and then we can approve the minutes, I have no problem with that. But Julie is working really hard to try to do a good job. And this is kind of a tough, you know, you know, you know so we're kind of inferring that she's not doing good minutes. So if it's not a big deal when we're looking at minutes, to just take and add a little more clarity. Uh, Jerry, whatever you want to put in the minutes, put it in now. And Julie, I think you're doing a great job on the minutes. So if we want to revise those minutes a little bit to reflect and we all agree with it, let's do it. And if that, if that happens in the future and you want to revise some minutes to include a few more words, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, we do it all the time, but it don't make a big deal out of this. Yeah, you know, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I mean, you know, it's. Then, then what do you want to put in there? 
Well, it's well. First of all, it's not. I'm not the secretary. It's not my function to revise them. No. If you want to make a motion to add something to those minutes, you can certainly do it. Yes. Okay. Fine. But on the other hand, uh, um, I, I. Fine. I I will do that. However, it's not my function to 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 revise these minutes. It should it should be done, and I can I can do it, and I will I will revise them, and um, and I will. Carrie, give, I think excuse I will me, give me... them to Julie, and she can include them. And on our next meeting, we can revise them because this is entitled review of the minutes. It's not a big deal if people. Well, that's what I, Carrie, that's what I'm trying to get. A lot of times we'll forget something. You know, I mean, it's not. We can forget things and that's what it's for. So whatever we need to put in, we can put in. Right, right. And, and so if you want to, um, I, I, I think you, I think what you want to do is amend the minutes to include something else in there, but I'm not quite sure you exactly know what. So I still want to um, add my amendment to table these minutes to the, our next, our next meeting. That'll also, give us. And then, you know, then we can approve them and then you can decide how you want to amend them and we don't have to do it right now. Bye. I'll second that. A roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. Jerry Heavey? Jerry Heavey? Yes. Jay Colby? Yes. Okay. Now that we're beyond, well, we didn't get beyond minutes, but... <laughs> the warrants. Um, I would entertain a motion to sign warrants. I move to sign warrants. Second. Uh, um, actually, um, that's a second. Can I amend that? Can I move to have the chairman sign the warrants? I'll second that too. <laughs> okay. uh, discussion. Uh, roll call vote. Alicia Greco. Yes. Michael Doyle. Yes. Jerry Heavey. Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby, yes. Uh, we have no executive session tonight. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And a roll call vote. Alicia Greco? Yes. Michael Doyle? Yes. Gary Heavey? Yes. Jeff Walker? Yes. And J.R. Colby? Yes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank night. you, everyone. Good. See you Thank Monday you. Night. Monday night. Monday night. What time? Monday night, 6.30? 6.30. Yeah, 6.30. 6.30. 6.30.